Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, reveal cards in increasing order. We're given an array of integers deck where every integer is going to be unique. That's going to be pretty important. And they basically give us a few rules of how we want to draw the cards. So just to quickly run a simulation, let's say these are the cards that were given one, two, three. Let's say this is the top of the deck. We're going to draw one and then we're going to take the next card and instead of drawing it, we're going to actually move it to the end of the deck. So it's going to be over here now. Then we draw the next card, three, and then we take the next card and then move it to the end of the deck. And it's just a single card anyway. So then we will end up drawing this card. So if the cards appear in this order, one, two, three, we're going to draw them in this order as I kind of just showed you. And we're going to keep doing that until we've drawn every single card. So every single card is going to be drawn exactly once. And we're given a deck of cards in no particular order. So take this for example, 17 and a bunch of other cards here. So if we draw them in the order that they're given, the output is going to look something like this 17, uh, skip that 11, and then skip the two, then we get three and I could continue like this, but I won't just to save you time. Now, the problem with this is that we actually want to rearrange the cards so that in the order that they get drawn is always going to be in increasing order. So which way can we rearrange these cards so that they are drawn in this order, basically sorted order like this. This is how we want to draw the cards like this order. So how can we accomplish that given these rules for drawing the deck? As you can imagine, sorting is probably going to help us. So at the very least, we know that if we take the input and sort it, this is the target that we are looking for. But the solution to the problem is definitely different. So let's take a look at the solution and try to study it. So if we were to rearrange the cards in this order, then we would get our result. And let me just quickly walk you through why. So first we draw two. Okay, then we skip 13. We move it over there. I'm not going to draw that out, but we're going to leave this here for now. So then we're going to draw 13. So I guess I'll just mark a number next to each. So this is going to go first. This is going to go second. Skip this and then draw this third. Skip this, then draw this fourth. Now, since each of these three cards that we have not drawn yet are going to be pushed to the end each time, the relative order of these is actually going to stay the same. So let's just go through them from left to right now. Since this is the last card that we drew, we now have to skip this card. So we skip it and then we draw this card fifth and then we get to this card. Now we skip it and then we go back here and we draw this one is the sixth card. And then lastly, we go to this card, we skip it, and then we come back to it because it's the only card that's left. And we draw this one seventh. If you take a look at the order that we drew the cards, you can see it is definitely in increasing order. And since every value is unique, there's always going to guarantee to be at least one result. And there's actually just going to be exactly one result. So this is the result for this example that we are looking at. Now, why does this work? Let's think about how we can solve this problem. So the first part of this is actually pretty simple. The first pass, I mean, because if you take a look, we know for sure we're given seven cards. So we're trying to figure out which card goes in each of those seven slots, right? Like we're trying to build the output. Assume we didn't know that we had this, like this is the result, but assume we don't know that yet. So we're trying to figure out what's going to go in all of these spots. Assuming we have the input and we sort it, we know for sure that the first value in sorted order should probably go at the beginning of the array. Now, we don't know what's going to go in the second spot, but we don't care because we're going to skip that value, right? So we skip that. And then what do we want to go here? Well, probably the next value in sorted order. OK, great. And then looking at this value, we skip it as well. What do we want to go here? The next value in sorted order. So, so far we've added two, we've added three, we've added five. So the first phase of this is pretty simple. We keep doing this until we reach the end. We add seven over here. Okay, great. 
Now is when you start to think, well, okay, there's multiple ways we could think about this problem. We took like half of the elements and then put them there. Now what should we do? Should we take half of these elements and then put them here as well? Like what's the rule? What kind of simulation or what kind of algorithm can we run that will guarantee that we get the correct result? Let's not even focus on the runtime for now. Like we kind of did with like the simulation, we know that these three values, like these three slots, the relative order of them is going to be consistent. We also know that there's three values in sorted order left for us to place. Now, what should we do? Should we do something really naive and just put the 11 here, put the 13 over there, and then put the 17 over here? No, because remember, just because we've drawn them this way doesn't mean that's exactly how they're gonna be like drawn from the deck because we're going to skip some of the cards and then draw some of the others. So like the fact that it's odd or even is kind of relevant to the problem, but we don't have to account for that. We don't have to pay too much attention to whether we were given an odd or even number of values because we are just going to kind of continue with the simulation here. We want to draw 11 next, but we know that we just drew a seven. So just like how we filled in these first values, we put a card there, then we skip the next position. We put a card there, skip, put a card, skip. We do the exact same thing with the next slots, even though they're in a weird order and with these values. So even though we want to put 11 in the next slot, we skip this slot right now because we just placed a value here. So we skip this one and then we put 11 over here. So that's what I'm gonna do. Next, we wanna put 13 in the next available slot, but we wanna skip one of the slots. So then we end up putting 13 in the next available slot and we kind of loop around. We end up putting 13 over here. And then lastly, with 17, we want to put in the next available slot, but we skip it for now and then we loop around and we get back here. So then we put 17 over here. In case you don't know yet what the solution is based on that drawing, let me make it even more clear. I'm going to run through this one last time in a slightly different way. So these are the indices that we're trying to fill. We start with index zero. We take the first value, put it in index zero. Next, we want to fill not the next index, but we actually skip this one. And next, we want to fill two. But we will fill one eventually, but it's going to go after all of these. So you can imagine that the indices are kind of like a queue. We go from left to right, but we skip every single one and then place it to the other side. Even though in the context of the problem, they said we draw a card and then take the next card and then move it to the end, which is what we're trying to build, we're kind of doing the reverse of that. Instead of taking the card and putting it at the end, we're taking the index and putting it at the end. So skip this and then put three over here, skip three, and then put seven over here, skip five, and put 11 over here. So now we just need to fill these three indices in. So imagine this was a big queue. We popped these from the queue, but these three are left and the order of them has not changed at all. So now we pop from the queue. Since we just filled six in, we skip one. Then the next one we pop from the queue is three. And so the value is gonna go here. And next we get five, but we skip it. So then we're at index one and we put 13 over here. Next, we pop index five, we skip it and then push it back to the queue and take the last value 17 and then fill it there. So this is how we're going to solve the problem. We're going to fill in the slots, pushing and popping each index from the queue. This can be done in linear time, as you will see in the code and in O of N space, because we do have a queue that we're keeping track of. So now let's code it up. First, I'm going to sort the input array deck, because when we iterate over the cards in the deck, we're going to go for N in deck. So for each card, we're going to try to figure out which slot we want to uh, put it in. And so that I'm going to call the result. It's initially just going to be an empty array or an array of zeros, I guess, but we want to make it the same length as the deck. And that can be done in Python by actually just multiplying it like that. And so this is what we want to return ultimately. So let's put that return statement out there. But remember, we want to skip indices and then move those indices at the end of the queue. So I'm going to create a queue, which in Python you can do like this deck, and I'm going to call the range function. And this is basically going to be from zero up until the length of the deck. So this is basically creating a queue from zero up until the length of the deck minus one. If you want to make it even shorter, 
you can rewrite it like this because by default that's what the range function does it'll go from zero up until this value minus one that's what this deck is and now every time we're trying to figure out which slot this n value is going to go so what we're going to do is say q pop left from the q this tells us the index so now we'll say at this index store this value n now if we were just doing it this way we would just be pretty much sorting the deck, right? This isn't really doing anything creative. We forgot to skip. So after we take this value and put it at this index, the next index in the queue, we want to skip it for now at least. So what we say is append to the queue, whatever is at the front of the queue right now. So we can say queue.pop left and whatever value we pop, we're gonna now push it to the end of the queue. And this line here may not be possible to execute. What if there's nothing left in the queue? So before we, whoops, before we do this, let's make sure that the queue is non-empty and then we can execute this part. So I know this code is actually really, really simple, though I will admit it's not easy to come up with. Let's just quickly run it to make sure that it works. You can see it does, it's pretty efficient, but don't let this fool you. The reason I was able to honestly solve it so easily is if you look here at the fine print, four years ago, I actually solved this problem for the first time. So that definitely does help. But if you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.